I'd like to welcome you to Kenny Bunk High School. I have so much pride in terms of what we accomplish in this building, in terms of academics, athletics, uh, visual and performing arts. It's just amazing what our students and what our teachers do. And as I bring you into this front office, this is one thing that I'd like to improve upon. I love being in the middle of things. I like being with students and seeing what's happening. My office is in the back. You have to keep walking down through to get to my office. And it gets very congested in here in the morning, especially as everybody comes in to get things. As we go through the tour, you're going to see things that uh, need to be taken care of. And just imagine what we could do if we took care of some of these facility issues. Um, but you'll also, th I also want to show you some incredible things that are happening in classrooms as we go about the building. The buckets are here because yesterday morning when we came in after the holiday break, uh, the teacher came over to the main office and said that the ceiling tiles were coming down and as you can see quite a few of them fell down and the water is still coming in so we had to relocate the room and uh, right now this special ed class is in one of the assistant principal's offices. Uh, we also have to do an inventory of the materials that were lost during the flood. Okay, We're constantly taking care of wet ceiling tiles. Um, that especially after the weather that we've had recently, we're, we're on constant alert so that the ceiling tiles won't come down. This room, we've struggled with uh, water issues, as you can see up on the ceiling, and uh, we seem to have them under control at this point, but there's still that fear that the water's going to come in and get on their artwork. So we're now in the girls' locker room, and uh, as you come around the corner here, you see the shower stalls. This was built in the 1981 edition. Uh, the gang shower obviously is not used anymore. It's used for storage. And as we've said in other parts of the building, storage just doesn't exist. So deplorable conditions in here, and it's really an embarrassment when te visiting teams come. Yeah, the room is our athletic training facility, and this is where we treat all injuries. Uh, do physical therapy as well as uh, just hopefully prevention but care and then recovery from any any injury so we might we'll have uh, we have a trainer a head trainer oftentimes she might have a student trainer working with her from one of the local colleges but um, so kids will come in and you could get anywhere from you know five to 25 kids on a daily basis looking for some care and prevention. These are the lockers that were installed originally in the building in 1938 and you can see how narrow these are. Uh, recently as we've looked at newer schools we found that students don't really use lockers and so we won't be putting as many lockers in the new building but these are really useless right now. One feature that we want in our new building is 800 square foot classrooms because in this day and age students meet in groups as these students are around a table, then they work on computers, they move about the room, there are many different activities. It's not just sit, take notes, have the teacher lecture. Does everyone understand that the x squared, the y squared makes it nonlinear? This is another example of a classroom that is far too small. This is another example of a classroom that is far less than 800 square feet and what, Ms. what the teacher does is he moves the desks around to put them into groups but it gets pretty congested in here. This is a computer lab. Teachers can sign up to bring their students in here. One issue with this lab is there's again no ventilation in here. Um, when we do testing at the end of the year we have fans on. I often think that it impacts the test because the students are so uncomfortable in here. You can see the lack of storage. All the AV material is stored in here. You can see the wires coming out of the ceiling because one issue is we're trying to retrofit a building. This part was built in 1981 for technology in 2014. This is one of our English classrooms, and if you come in here around the corner, there's a closet. We don't, we don't put students in the closet. Sometimes they like to go in the closet to do their work quietly. What I wanted to point out on the wall, you'll see some of the um, electrical equipment that uh, often needs servicing for this part of the building. This is a passageway so the students don't have to go outside. We call it Rogers Way. Right now we have one-way traffic, but very often it's two-way. It's very narrow and tight here. This used to be a foreign language class. 
and we needed a science room. So we basically came in to retrofit this room to make it into a science lab. We were able to run the water pipes because it's close to the other room, science rooms where we hung the wires from the ceiling, as you can see, and we've made do with this as one of the science rooms. So this is our library. You'll notice it's in the back corner of the building upstairs. A uh, library should be centrally located, and that's what's in the plan. We'd also like the library to be open at night for the community, and again, that's in the plan for the renovation. This library, you'll notice that the books are stacked around the edges of the library, and that's due to the architect's recommendation when, the build, when this addition was done in 1981 we were told to position the stacks around the edge of the, the library and not to put all the weight in the middle of the floor. In this particular area, we have our foreign language classrooms. You'll notice they're portables. Uh, some were homemade portables years and years ago, and then we have some that we brought in right after that. So the entire foreign language department is out here. You can see the ice. Um, you can feel how cold it is. Any student taking a foreign language class has to go outside to get to class. For our students who are on crutches or in wheelchairs, it's a challenge to go down these ramps to get to the foreign language classrooms. And right now they're clear, but on given days there might be ice, so we're constantly watching that situation. And one thing that's really difficult when you teach in a portable, and I have taught in a portable, is you don't get the interaction with other teachers that they get in departments that are in the, the regular school inside. So you can't stand outside your room and talk to students as they go by and to t uh, talk to other, stu other teachers as well. We have the driveway down the middle of the school, which is a constant issue that we deal with. There's two-way traffic during the daytime, students going back and forth for classes and for lunch, uh, delivery trucks here unloading for the cafeteria, and on certain days, like this one, it's freezing cold out here. So a, a portion of every day, you have to figure out how you're going to get from one place to another. And um, obviously our portables are in back, so you have to be outside when you're at this building. As you know, we have 57 exterior doors all over the building. Security is, is always at the top of our concerns. These doors close. Students obviously cannot get back into them. Sometimes they try to prop the doors, which we don't allow them to do for safety concerns. There's a swipe card system. Teachers have swipe cards. I guess you could call this our faculty room. It's, it's where we put the mail. People post messages for other people. And uh, certainly I would love to have a faculty room, not for people, they don't have time just to sit down, but it is usually a gathering spot where you can exchange ideas about teaching and get to know other people in the building. The ladies' faculty bathroom, which also doubles as a storeroom for the wrestling team's mops and so forth to prepare Jim C for wrestling practice. This is the auditorium, and an interesting fact is in 1938, this was the gymnasium, if you look at the old pictures, and actually the cafeteria used to be up here on stage. Obviously, now we use it for our theater classes. One constraint that we have on our schedule is that because the theater classes are in here and because the band room is adjacent, we can't schedule theater classes at the same time because of the noise. And, uh, a big problem right now is the lack of storage. You can see where the instruments are stored. Those uh, cabinets were built by the music teachers. Uh, we're constantly moving things, constantly setting up. You can see the chairs piled up here. And um, when we were over in Jim C previously, the uh, risers for the chorus were over there because there just isn't any place to put things. Um, as of right now, there are three sections of um, band here at KHS because our room cannot accommodate um, having them all in the same space together. Um, this makes it very difficult for trying to get together for concerts. We have one dress rehearsal before a concert, um, but three sections having to rehearse separately because the room can't accommodate them at the same time um, is a major problem. One thing that I take great pride in is you don't see graffiti, you don't see trash on the floor, and I, I'm proud of our students and our teachers for how well they take care of the building. It's, it's so old, but it's, it's definitely, there's a, a friendly atmosphere in this building and a sense that people care about each other. Thank you for completing this tour with us, and I hope that you're as proud of my students, faculty, and staff as I am at this point, now that you've been able to go through our facility.